Hi, Beck Mac here for Pops Art, and I am at one space because I am so lucky because I'm going to get a sneaky peek tour with the one and only Lisi Carmichael here in her new, amazing, beautiful, immersive exhibition called Present Surroundings. How are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you going? Now, I know you've had a big day in that you've just put the works up, that you've had your photos done, the work's present here now. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good, yeah. It's um, it's super exciting because I haven't had a solo show in a little while. So this is my first one in about three years. Yeah, so um, it's really exciting to see everything come together and a lot of the work that I made in the show um, I made um, in 2020 when we were in lockdown and it was a really strange year. So I've had them close to me at home, so it's nice to be able to share them with the world now. Free the babies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, you have a great connection and care for your ancestral lands, Mogulpin, Kondamuka and Minjirimba. Can you tell us about that relationship and how you've explored that through these works here? Yeah. Um, so, you'll see um, in the exhibition um, a lot of the works are um, about our relationship um, with water and our abundance of um, resources, materials on country um, and also um, caring and nurturing for country and um, what's happening with our country now mm -hmm. and how I see country um, and how I hope to see it in the future. Like, just reading about your work, you really tapped into your matrilineal, ancestral understandings of making work. Can you tell us, how, how did you do that? Like, how did you go back into the past so deep and find out so many great, amazing things? So, um, with a lot of the woven works, um, I've made these um, with the guidance of my mum. Um, and Who is a superstar. <laughs> And um, and talking a lot with my sister Freya, mm. um, and so there's been a lot of research involved in technique and material. Yeah. Um, over on the plinth here, yeah. um, these are the first times that I've made reed necklaces, and so um, I was inspired to make these um, off um, photographic um, documentation from. Um, museum collections and um, also texts that I was reading and so I sort of taught myself how, how to make them, um, which was a really beautiful process, yeah. So in a way you are kind of reconstructing, reconfiguring ancient knowledge in tradition in a way, so bringing it into the present. Does that feel amazing? Yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's really special and with the photograms here, um, these were works that I made because I wanted people um, to be able to see the um, intricate details of the weaves and also the reed segments because, um, you know, these lines and techniques were created by our ancestors. So um, I think it's really special to, um, like through the process of making the photograms, I've actually placed the um, reed necklaces and the dilly bags onto the photographic paper so they've made they've gone through a process of making their own mark yeah. and I think that gives them their own voice as well yeah and I read um that your mum discovered a weaving technique in a bag that was somewhere off the island in a collection somewhere is that right yeah so um there's a lot of museum collections all over the world that have um um baskets that have been um, taken off country and um, stored in museum collections mm. and so um, the baskets that are on the wall over here which are called um, Gulai for our jundal um, so that means uh, Kwandamuka um, dilly bag for our women mm. um, and that's the technique so the loop and the diagonal knot weave um, and I've wove them out of coded wire um, so they are so beautiful and fragile and magic. They're almost like stockings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I wanted to install them um, like this so they're like a family um, and they're all connected and they're floating in the space. Um, I'm trying to avoid with this exhibition. I, I, wanted, I didn't want to have like a 
um, a museum, anthropological hang. Mm. I wanted them to be grouped together like a family to show their strength. Yeah. And I kind of like reflect the fluidity of the necklaces over there, like the movement and the relationship yeah. between the objects. Yeah, yeah. And your work also really um, in your exploration of your country and the past, you also are looking at the now and the future and the, Im the degradation of the environment, the disrespect for what the land is through mining and where it's headed now. What, what do you feel is the future for, for this place? Um, I just, I guess, um, it's such a big question. <laughs> um, I just hope that um, people can, um, those not, there's a lot of people who do walk gently and care for country, but I hope more people can, can start to um, care for the lands that they're walking on and um, acknowledge and remember that they're walking on Aboriginal land and to be respectful of where they are and the environment that surrounds them. And finally, by people coming, like, can we just talk about this work? Because <laughs> it just is divine. But are they scales? I need to understand. And you put them all on there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it, this is a um, fishing net that I sourced um, from a garage sale. Um, and I've stitched each fish scale wow. onto the net. And then I stretched it over, um, this is a cotton tree bark. Um, that's bound with ghost net and um, the cotton tree is actually a um, really um, important fibre for weaving um, and a material on, on country. So this is the inner bark which is really, really strong and it, it would be woven into strings um, and then could be turned into nets. And um, I wanted to stitch that back into um, the fishing net because the um, it's sort of like a, a net holding the holding the land together. Um, we're having like a lot of erosion over on um, the island yeah. at the moment, and so and the cotton tree um, is found along the coastline, and it, it's so strong and holds the land together as well. So mm -hmm. I really wanted to acknowledge the importance of that um, fibre that we still use today. It's so like ethereal, like a shroud almost. It's so beautiful and. Is it, like, there must be such an uh, inner meditative process for you. Do you sort of, is it like that for you? Yeah, yeah. I, it takes a really long time stitching yeah. the scales. Oh, it's okay. like <laughs> stitching <laughs> stitching beads or sequins on things. Yeah, yeah, so it's a bit of, it's a long process. But, yeah, oh. it's, it's really relaxing to do. And yeah. It looks unbelievable. It's beautiful. And then just quickly over here, um, can you talk to this work here? Because it's sort of similar but very different. Yeah. So um, this work is called To Nurture and these are little yuguri shells um, which I have looped over with wire um, and it's about um, caring for country and protecting country and nurturing and keeping country safe. This um, is yuguri shells which are a really important food source for our people. And then finally, this piece here, mm -hmm. can you just tell us a bit about that? So um, this piece, so the two pieces sit together yes. um, and it's called um, Shell Vessel and um, found, adorn found Adornment. And um, it's woven with, so this is our traditional weaving fibre, the unge, and these are the beautiful colours um, that it comes when, when it's freshly harvested. Yeah. So got um, the pink roots which turn up to the green and it's so beautiful um, and then shells from country and then the neck adornment I sort of wanted to talk about what we're finding on our beaches today yeah. so the contrast between the shells and then the found plastics um, and all those plastics are pieces that have washed up on the beach on the island mm. um, and so I've woven them together to have that conversation Absolutely. Shocking, because quite recently I was over on the island and it was just, you couldn't believe the plastic that was on the beach. Yeah. But overall, like, being in this space, I can feel the past and I do, um, it does make me feel the place mm -hmm. and definitely consider what the future will be. What would you 
like for someone to come in and view this work, what, what ultimately would you like, if you could make it happen, their experience be? 